Christmas, everybody! Christmas. Merry Christmas! Yes. I think it'd be great if somebody would dim the lights back there. Will somebody do that? Do I have an usher in the house? Thank you. Let's make it, let's get atmosphere in this place. Uh -huh. Amen. Turn around, look at somebody right now and say, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! How many of you think we have something to be excited excited about? Why, do, why are we excited? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. Because Jesus came into the world to redeem us. Because he paid the ultimate price. He shed his blood and redeemed us. It was the resurrection and the life. And we can say, I'm a child of the king today. Look at somebody right now and say, I'm a child of the king. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you at Christmas time, you like Christmas carols? You like the Christmas song? How many of you appreciate the fact that at Christmas time, all, all the stores and everybody sings about our king? They don't even know what they're doing. They just do it because it's Christmas. They don't understand. They don't understand that they're magnifying Jesus. They don't understand that they're praising the Lord that we praise all year long. Don't you think that's incredible? Yeah, look at somebody. Joe just said, we'll take it. Look at somebody else and say, we'll take it. Amen. <laughs> we'll take it. Praise God. Boy, y'all look great. Y'all look incredible tonight. Do I have rose-covered colored glasses on, or have you really looked that good? I think, you, I think you look awesome. I appreciate how many of you have come out tonight. We're celebrating. This, is, this isn't a regular Thursday night service. This is Christmas Eve service tonight. Amen. I said this is a Christmas Eve service. And why are we doing this instead of tomorrow night? Because you'd have a service tonight, and there's so many people that just choose which one they're going to go to. Right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And how many know on Christmas Eve, there's a lot of things that people already have prepared, and they got to do and take care of. And so because it's so close, because it's back-to-back, -back, Thursday night, Friday night, and then, then Christmas is on Saturday, then Sunday, uh, we went and we're celebrating Christmas Eve tonight, and you're here to celebrate it. Praise God! Now, would you look at somebody next to you and say, "Thank you for coming tonight"? Thank you for coming tonight. Now, would someone look up here at these singers and the praise team and say, "Thank you all for being in your position tonight"? Amen. Would you turn around and for a minute look at the sound people in the back and the the video people and the and the. And, and say, thank you, thank you for being in your position tonight. We appreciate yes. it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Now, uh, now would you look over to our, our greeters and our ushers and say, thank you for taking your post tonight. Thank Amen. You for your post tonight. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for your support. 
Everybody's in their place. Everybody's in their position doing what they're supposed to do. And y'all look just awesome. Y'all look awesome. We've got some special things tonight. We're going to have a good time. And we're going to get the word of God. How many of you came to get the word of God? All right. We're going to get the word of God in a Christmas fashion tonight. Amen. Okay. And then we're going to, at the end of the service, we're going to just enjoy the presence of the Lord as we, as we recognize his presence in this house tonight. Amen. Thank you, Teresa. Wow, you look great up there. Go ahead and do that next song, Teresa. Lift your voices. Let's sing like we was a mighty choir, just like we was a choir that all came in to be able to sing praises to the King. You've been chosen tonight to sing praises to the Lord. You've been chosen tonight to worship in the presence of God. So give it your best shot. Open up your voices and minister to Him. joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of angels. Can somebody tell me what we just sang? 
Oh, come let us what? Adore. Adore. What does it mean to adore something? That means honor, right? Cherish. Show homage. Amen. Show respect. Amen. Come let us honor him. And before we go to the next song, I want everybody just to take a moment. Let's just take a moment right now and let's adore the King of Glory right now. Let's adore the Lord right now in the best way that you know how. Whatever fashion you want to adore him. However you want to tell him how much you love him. However you, and you can play a little bit of background music on that. You can play that song, just play it in the background. And just give the Lord praise and thank him. If you know that he watched over you today. If there was something that could have happened but didn't because the angel of God protected you. Would you just dare to thank him for it right now? Lord, we thank you. We adore you. We didn't come in here just to sing a song and go to the next one. We came, Lord, to recognize your presence. We adore you. We magnify you. Oh, Lord, we come into your presence recognizing, God, that you are an awesome God. Uh, you are a truly of God and more than enough. You meet our needs according to your riches and glory. And, Lord, you heal us. You're our healer. You're our deliverer. Oh, Lord, you watch over us day and night. You dispatch angels in our behalf to make sure, God, that we're protected. Oh, Lord, we can't even imagine. Right now, we just look, look through a looking glass darkly. But one day when we're face to face with you, we're going to see how you protected us all of our life. We're going to see how you watched over us. God, we're going to see. And we're going to look back and see all the things you did that we didn't even know about because you love us so much. Would somebody just give him a big praise for his goodness? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Now let's go ahead and just praise him. Give him a break. Glory. Praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him like you mean it. Uh, Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name. We adore you. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. I'm going to throw a song on you, okay? Go tell it on the mountain. Let's do it now. Y'all can help me sing that? Can we do it? Can you guys play it? Can you play it on the drums over there? <laughs> Say something to me, Steve. I love you, Steve. That's, that's I love you back in drum language. Yeah. Can you give me an F? On an F, yes. Well, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Now go tell it on the mountain, oh, that Jesus Christ is born. Sing it with me now. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the Go, go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills, everywhere. Now go, tell it on the mountain. Oh, that Jesus Christ is born. Sing with me now. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Now go, tell it on the mountain. Well, that Jesus. Christ, sing it again, hallelujah, well go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, now go, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born, hallelujah, you know what go tell it means, you know what that song means, go tell it? That means you should have enough of Jesus inside of you that it's coming out of you. It's boiling out. You got to tell somebody. You got to tell somebody. You got to tell your neighbors. You got to tell somebody at the grocery store. You got to tell somebody at the gas station. You got to tell somebody what Jesus Christ has done in your life. How many of you know we all need to be a witness and tell somebody? <clears throat> and if you can't tell him verbally, you ought to be able to tell him uh, with your expression. How many of you know people ought to see Jesus in you? Jesus ought to see Jesus in us. Amen. Just by the way, our countenance, our countenance ought to show that we're in love with the King. Amen. We got one more song, right? Are you ready? Yep. Are you ready? Yep. Go for it. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Turn around and sing it to somebody. We're going to sing it through several times and look at somebody. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And we wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Sing it again. Go to two or three people and sing it to them. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yo. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you guys up here. Merry Christmas. Musicians, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a happy One more time. Sing it again. Oh, we wish you a Merry Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sing it. Go ahead, sing it. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, do it. Do, do it, whatever. Here, here, take a mic. We'd love to hear it again. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Amen. Thank you, praise team. We appreciate you all. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand clap.
going to ask Ruben to hold this mic here for me, if you would. Let's see if it's working. Check, one, two, check, good. Here's what I, here's what I would like. How many of you, you can think right now some things how good God's been to you this year? Just a second, Ruben. I'm, I'll call people out. There. Okay, wait, wait, will you wait for me, please? Thank you, brother. I, I know you're in a hurry. Here's what I, here's what I want to, listen, here's what I want to hear a couple of quick testimonies about how God's been good to you. How many of you know what a popcorn testimony is? How many of you know when, when, when a popcorn, you put a little kernel and it gets enough heat under it, it pops up and then it comes right back down, right? So, we're, so, so we, we want a couple of quick testimonies, just something that shares. And listen, we don't want to talk about all, all the bad things that happen. All, you know, I was, I, I was sick all year, Pastor, and my back hurt, and I had lumbago, and, uh, and, and you know, and I, I had, uh, uh, and, and, and I felt bad all day, praise the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about that. I want, a, I want a, a testimony that gives glory to him. So you got a testimony, don't you? Do you give your hand up? Go ahead. So I, I, I want a few. <laughs> Just tell us what Jesus has been doing for you. Well, Jesus has got me into church. Amen. Found a church that I'm comfortable with. So Amen. thank you. Um, I got a lot, a rid of a lot of baggage off my shoulders in the last year. Praise God, dear. Praise God. And we're so glad to have you guys. You, you two girls are awesome. We appreciate you. Who else has a popcorn testimony right here? Uh, I just want to say how the Lord financially blessed me. And one day I had one blessing of $300. Another day, the same night, I had another blessing of $300. Nobody's ever given me $600 in one day. The Lord has blessed me, and I don't know for what, but I'm praying he reveals for what. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. Who else can give a testimony that what Jesus means to you as we recognize his power this, this Christmas? I want to thank God, Jesus Christ, for helping me heal this darn hole in my throat for five years, man. Oh, my goodness. And uh, it's coming out this yes. year. We come in agreement with you right now, Dusty. Praise God. In Jesus' name. By his stripes, you are him. healed. I thank him daily for what he does for me. Every Amen. Day. Amen. Amen. Who else wants to share what Jesus is doing? Gabrielle. Well, I want to tell Amen. Amen. Effie, it's so good to have you back, part of this church family, part of our lives. We love you. Let her say something. This year, Pete, I'm just really happy to be here and praise the Lord. God is just wanting to talk to you more today. Amen. God is causing me to come to him more and more every day. We love you, girl. And true God just fills me with his love and his peace. Amen. God bless you guys. It's so good to have you, girl. We love you too, girl. And Effie, I want you to know one thing. Your sister loves you so much. She prayed for you day and night, day and night, when you was in the hospital and all the things you've gone through. And you serve a big God because he brought you here and you're, you're on your feet and God is healing you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love the connection between the two of you. That's what family's all about, amen. Amen. Who has a testimony? Who wants to share something? Raise your hand. Amen. We want to testify about the God who answers prayer. Yes. Our family was very sick for the last three weeks. Mm. We had a 92-year-old mother who got COVID. And our brother, who is not a Christian, he, uh, he don't testify Christ. He said, you know mama have to die, but COVID would not carry her out. And we saw her come back in a miraculous way. So we thank God for God wants us prayer. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. That's okay. What did you need, brother? Just tell me right from there. You're welcome, buddy. Love you, man. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dusty. Love you. Amen. Who else wants to hear a quick testimony? Over here. Over here. Look. You're going to lose 10 pounds, Reuben. That's what we're going to do. Charles Pearson is my daddy. I love you. You is the number one person. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Reuben. Amen. We're going to have the testimonies again in a little bit. Who said somebody else still thinking about it? We're going to make sure that we get you get a chance for you to share the love of Jesus. Amen. There's a couple of videos that we're going to show tonight. One of them we've seen in times past, but there was to me. And they speak so powerfully of the birth of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to see that video? Are we going to turn those overhead lights off? The, the, the overhead lights. Turn the volume up, please. Thank you.
I love that song and uh, Winona Judd and and Kenny Rogers do such an awesome job on this song. And I, I appreciate so much. That's one of my favorite songs, Mickey's favorite songs. And every time you do it, Sue, it's just, you do an awesome job on that song. And, and just think about that. Just think about that song. Here's Mary, a very young girl. She's a virgin. And she loves God. And God chooses her. Chooses her. Out of all the women at, at, at that, in, in that, that time, he knew her heart. He chose her to be the virgin girl that he was going to impregnate her through the power of the Holy Spirit with the seed of God. And she would bring forth the Christ child. Why did God use a virgin? Because the, the sinful seed of Adam was not placed in her. Is anybody following me? See, we all have the, sin, the, the, the sinful seed of Adam in us because we're from Adam, amen? But the sinful seed of Adam was not placed in, in, in Mary because the Christ child was one without sin. And that had to be for him to be the sin bearer for us. Is somebody with me? And, this, and that song, Mary, did you know? But she didn't know. Mary didn't know Jesus would walk on water. Mary didn't know that Jesus would be the son of the most high God. She didn't know that he would seal and heal the sick and raise up the dead. Mary didn't know all the things that Jesus would do, but God did. And she was a vessel that she was willing to trust him. How many of you know trust is important when it comes to God? Trust. She trusted him. When the angel spoke, she, had just, she didn't know what was going on. She just trusted him. God, if you said it, then I believe it. I don't understand it. I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't understand it. But if you said it, how could this be? That I'm a virgin girl. How can I conceive and have a child uh, w without the impartation of a man? How can that be? But God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. How many of you had to trust God on some things in your life? I mean, you had to trust God when it seemed like it, it, you didn't understand. You didn't understand what was happening. And then as that song goes through all the different things, Mary, did you know that one day he's going to walk on water? Mary, did you know that one day he would hang on Calvary's cross, suspended between heaven and earth, too righteous to be on the earth, and the sin was on him. He couldn't be in heaven. He was suspended on a tree, according to Galatians 3.13. Curses, cursed is he who hangs on a tree. He took our curses for us and paid the ultimate price for us. Mary, did you know? Wow. That's pretty incredible. We're going to look at, at, at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. We're going we're gonna to read that scripture. Doc's going to read it. He's our scholar here. By the way, if you anybody has any interest to go going to Bible college, we have a Bible college that, that that is incredible. It's been going on for 38 years, so you know it has to be good. And Doc does such an incredible job teaching any of this in his Sunday school class. You already know. And if you're a, a member of this church in good standing and you're a tither, the very first year we scholarship the first 50 percent of your tuition for the first year and we just want, we just that's how important it is to us and you can say well what, why would the church do that pastor because we're raising up leaders and people that serve in here that has at least some bible knowledge and know some things about that word word of god and a lot of people start with the first year because we offer this and many times they keep on going second year get their associates and then get their bachelors and then go after their masters and then get their doctorate is anybody with me and so it's an incentive to make it happen. Just a little, just a little uh, advertisement for the college. Well, I, I truly thank you for that, sir. That's a, a real blessing to share. Thank you. And out of those 38 years, the Lord has allowed me to be involved for 28 of them. Wow. And I'm, I'm honored to be able to share the word so this morning, this evening. Go for it, Doc. Luke 1, 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God 
to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered the manner of greeting. What manner of greeting was this? And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of our Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, The babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. If you have any comments, Doc, feel free. I know you probably do. (laughs) One of the things that we have to realize that when the angel spoke to Mary there in verse 29, or actually 28 and 29, he said to her, don't be afraid. There are some of us in this room, because of what's going on around us, that we are a little afraid. Circumstances have happened. Physical circumstances, emotional circumstances, things in your family. And the Lord as the angel said to Mary, would want you to know, don't be afraid. As a matter of fact, this baby grew up to say to us, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The Lord did what he did to show you that there is a way through. So whatever trouble you might be facing, the angel is declaring to you tonight, do not be afraid. For what he did for Mary, he can do for you and bring you through to a place where you become a testimony as Mary did. Elizabeth thought, why am I blessed that the mother of our our Lord would come to see me? People will come to see you when they know that you have experienced a touch from God. 
and have learned not to be afraid. And people will come and say, how does that happen? And you say, because I trust God. Alfie and Gabrielle didn't think they were going to be able to see each other. And here they are on, th on the eve of, th of Christmas, a celebration of the greatest gift of all, that sisters are experiencing the greatest gift of all because the angel said, do not be afraid. Some of you in this room are here tonight because the angel has said to you, do not be afraid because he's raising up a testimony that's going to come through you and touch somebody like Mary touched Elizabeth. And it's not about making your name glorious, but it's about making his name glorious. That's awesome. Praise God. That deserves a hand clap to the Lord. I think we ought to praise him for that. Amen. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Seymour just read the, the account of Dr. Luke of the birth of Jesus. And then after that account took place, Mary was so excited and she was so full of the joy of the Lord that she sang a song of praise to him. How many of you think when something extraordinary happens to you spiritually in your life, you ought to give praise for it. Amen. How many of you know if you get a healing, you ought to give praise for it? Yes. Remember when Jesus healed the ten lepers? Nine of them left. Didn't even turn back and say thank you. We've got to be so careful that we don't take the blessings of the Lord for granted. Amen? Amen. But one leper came back and thanked him for healing his body. You know, whenever something extraordinary happens in the, with the Lord, with us, we need to praise him. We need to thank him. And that's what Mary did. I would like us to recognize the fact that there's some things we don't understand. How many of you know there's some spiritual things you don't understand fully? But you just have to believe. Amen? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And it's hard for us to get in our mind how can God become a baby in, in the name of Jesus Christ how can Jesus leave and God becomes the power of the Holy Spirit and there's three different dimensions of God and yet he's still God he's God the Father he's God the Son he's God the Holy Spirit well we, we, we believe it because the word says it but to really understand it we have to wait till we get to heaven first. Am I right? Yes. How many of you know there's something about that that's, uh, that's, that's hard to understand, but we know God is bigger than we are. His ways are bigger than our ways. Amen. And if he says it, we believe it. Yes. Amen. I want us to all stand, if you would, with me, and we're going to let Mary sing that song that you wrote, but I, would, I want you to stand with me as we sing Emmanuel, God with us. Can we do that? And remember what that's saying. God himself has come down in the presence of his son, Jesus Christ, to dwell among us, but he's still God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning, they were there from the very beginning of time. There was God. There was God the Son. There was God the Holy Spirit. And how many of you are glad that, that Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you like orphans. But the Holy Spirit is going to come and dwell with you. And how many of you are glad we got the Holy Spirit today in our lives? The Holy Spirit. That's the reason every time we come to the church we, or, or go, you go into your house, you'll say, welcome, Holy Spirit. I welcome you here. I welcome you in my life. I welcome you to take up residence with me. Amen. Would you lift your voice like a mighty choir as we sing Emmanuel? Emmanuel.
Come on, worshipers. Emmanuel. His name is called. Emmanuel. God is with us right here, right now. Revealed in us. His name is called. Emmanuel. Will you sing it with all your heart now? seated. The song that Mary wrote because of the joy that was in her heart after the power of God entered into her is found in Luke chapter 1 verses 46 through 55. It's the song that she sang and I want us to hear this song.
the song of Mary. It was a song of Mary. That's the song that she sang to the Lord. And as you listen to that song, maybe you picked up on the six main topics that she raised as she praised the Lord. How many of you know when you give praise to the Lord or in your prayer life sometimes or when you sing praises to him, usually there'll be something quickened in you that you want to tell him how you feel. Yes, yes. You want to show expression of your love for him. Amen. Here's six things that she said. First was found in verse 40, found in verse 46 in the Song of Mary. First thing she said is, my soul magnifies the Lord. Hallelujah. My soul makes the Lord bigger than my problem. My soul looks at God bigger than the healing that I need. My soul looks at God bigger than the circumstance that I'm facing and say, God, I magnify you. I make you bigger than anything that's going on in my life because you are a God that's beyond what I can imagine. In the natural, she could not see some things, but she magnified him and said, Lord, if you said it, then I believe it. Then the second thing I, I, I see in verse 47 is she said, my spirit has rejoiced in the God, my Savior. My spirit has rejoiced. My spirit is giving joy. My spirit... The Lord rejoices. In fact, the joy of the Lord has to be our strength. Amen? Amen. She rejoiced. She rejoiced in the joy of the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. How many of you know when you think you're right, your relationship with God, it has to look, you have to look beyond what you're going through. You have to look beyond the circumstances or the hurts or the wounds or the or the healing that's needed or the circumstances of right now. Look beyond that and just start rejoicing in the bigness of God. And you'll find out uh, uh, that you can rejoice because he's your Savior. And if he's your Savior, do you know that word in Savior is an all-inclusive word? Do you know the word Savior isn't, isn't just a fire escape? You know, you grab onto the rope and swing out over the heats of hell and you end in heaven and say, oh, yes, I made it. But that word Savior is all-inclusive. He's your healer. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's the power that you need to live every day. When she said, he's my Savior, she said, he's everything that I need. And then in verse 49, she said, or she sang, for all generations, for all generations will call me blessed. She recognized there was something in her that was special. There was something in her that was beyond any other woman. There's, there's some religions that worship her like she's God, but she doesn't want that. Do you know that? She doesn't want to be worshipped like God, but she wants to be recognized as the woman that brought forth the Christ child. And to recognize she's a blessed woman. And she said, all generations are going to call her blessed. And I think we recognize her as a blessed woman today, don't we? The woman that God chose to bring forth his son. What a blessed woman. And then she said in verse 50, and his mercy is on those who fear him. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. And that word fear doesn't mean I'm afraid God's going to strike me with a lightning bolt. Man, every time I do something, God's going to hit me. And he said, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that cannot have uh, the proper respect for God being uh, who he is because they've had a bad relationship maybe with their own father. And they don't know uh, the God's father to us. And he's Abba Father. And, and he's a God that's more than up. And he loves us in a, in a way that nobody else could love us. And when, when, when Mary said, when Mary talks about the fear of the Lord, she's talking about the respect and honor for God. Are you with me? So she said, his mercy is on those who fear him. I've always been one to fear the Lord or respect the Lord or honor God. And you know what? Because of that, it goes from one generation to the next. My children are affected because I have respect for God. My grandchildren are affected because I have respect for God. It goes from one generation to the next. Aren't you glad it just doesn't stop with you? But it'll go from your household to one generation to the other. Mary had a revelation of that. Then in 
verse 53, she said, and he has filled the hungry with good things. You know, we sing that song, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. I'm desperate for you. Always stay hungry for the things of God and he'll fill it. I say always stay hungry for God. Stay hungry for his word. Have a passion for the things of God and he'll always make sure the more hungry you are, the more he'll give you what you need to fill that hunger. And then in verse 55, she said, as he spoke to our fathers, as he spoke to our, she looked back and said, this God spoke to our fathers in the Old Testament, spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the Old Testament, she, he spoke to the ones that would hear his voice. But I've got some good news for you. He still speaks to us today. He didn't just speak to our fathers, but now if you got an ear to hear and you listen, he'll speak to us today. Can I hear an amen? amen. Oh, listen. I think this song that she sang to the Lord is just, uh, it, um, this, is, this is something of what we was able to find that would give you an insight on this song that she sang to the Lord. Uh, but if you get a chance, you go back and read it again, and, 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 and you find the highlights that God shows you in this song that Mary sang because of the joy that was in her heart. Amen. Pastor. Yes. Go ahead, Don. The angel said, do not be afraid. Do you know how that was possible? Go ahead, Don. The first line that she sang, my soul magnifies the Lord. I see God bigger than my problem, Amen. bigger than my financial need, bigger than my family problem, bigger than my doctor's diagnosis. Bigger than the problems in the city, in the county, because of the pandemic, I see God bigger than all of that. Therefore, I believe that God can do whatever his word says. Come on. Somebody ought to say amen to that. How many of you can... As it, you know, we just had testimony time, but how many of you will testify right now by the uplifted hand that through the times that you've known the Lord, how many times he's shown himself bigger than what your problem was? He showed himself bigger. Look at somebody next say, God, bigger than any problem I have. Tell us that somebody. Bigger than any Amen. problem. Bigger Amen. Than I would like everybody to stand with me if you would. And I would like my elders and deacons to come stand across the front. We're going to have a little candle light, but it's going to be the leadership's going to have a candle because Karen's going to make sure we have one. We're going to sing Silent Night together. So my leaders, you come down the front. Come on, you guys. You'll come down here. Stand up front. Spread across. Spread across. Fill this back section over here, too. Both sides. You got your candles? Okay. Ron needs one. How many of you know this song, Silent Night? I like to hear our voices just lift up. I like to rattle the roof for a minute with a song that just gives glory to the Lord. Amen. Think about Mary on that night when she sang that song to the Lord and she magnified him, made him bigger than all the things that she didn't understand.
Sing it again, silent night, holy night. Looking good out there. Holy infant soul, tender and mild. Sleep, Sleep in heavenly heaven peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. We're gonna we're gonna play that. For just a moment, we'll be dismissed in another minute or two. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I want to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you. And I thank God that He's given Mickey and I the privilege to be your pastors. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you do all year long to support this ministry. And I trust that you have a merry, merry Christmas. But if you're here tonight and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, or maybe you've asked him into your heart sometime, and you don't feel like he's where you want him to be right now, or maybe you need a healing in your body, maybe you need a touch from the Lord, and you would just like to have somebody pray for you. Our leaders are standing down here, and we're here to pray for you. So if you want to just slip out for a minute, come down, and if you have a need, as we sing it one more time, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, come and tell somebody, say, I want to get saved right now. I want Jesus to be Lord of my life right now. If that's you, I want you to come. Let's sing it one more time. touch and you need prayer, you want somebody to pray for you for whatever the reason might be, come down here, we'll lay hands on you, we'll leave God with you, we'll pray with you. Fear set right now. If you have a need, come. We'll pray for you. Just walk down to any of us. We'll pray. We'll pray for you.
Sing it one more time. We'll be dismissed. Hallelujah. If you need a, if you need prayer, come. There's an atmosphere that's being set right now. The presence of the Lord is just hovering in here. The Holy Ghost moved in. If you just thought about, let's say, I think I'll come to have prayer, but maybe, maybe there's not time. There's time. There's time for prayer for you. There's time for a touch from you. There's those down here that'll pray with you. In Jesus' name. This song, give me an F. Victory is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Oh, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, you better get behind. Cause victory today is mine. Sing it with me now. Oh, joy is mine. I said joy is mine. Oh, joy, well, today is mine. You can bring the house lights up. So Satan, you better get behind, cause joy today is mine. How about healing now? Oh, healing is mine. Oh, healing is mine. Well, healing today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, you better get behind, cause healing today is mine. Sing the victory. Oh, victory is mine. Come on, man. Victory is mine. Oh, victory today is mine. Turn around and tell somebody, I got the victory today. And you're dismissed. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Victory is mine. Victory.